Hi, this is Chris Farlow, and you're listening to Six Towns Radio in Burslem. And we look forward to seeing you on the tour in Stoke-on-Trent. Broadcasting to Stoke-on-Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. Okay, as Boston's about, I love doing this show. It gives me a great chance to speak to some amazing guests, and today is no exception. Please welcome to the show, Chris Farlow. Hello there. Nice to nice to be on the radio today. Thank you. Oh, it's fantastic to have you on because uh, you're part of the sensational '60s tour. It turns to Stoke. It's a great night out for all. Are you looking forward to doing it again? I'm looking forward to the tour very much. Yes, and Stoke. Um, I've got great memories of Stoke going back to the early days at the place there. And in, in, in Stoke and Burslem and all them areas. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're based in Burslem, um, on Queen oh, Street. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks. Yeah. It had quite a lot of things going on in the 60s. Yes, I know. It was a great area, that Stoke-on-Trent, for, uh, for young musicians like myself. I suppose now... Um, everyone wants to relive that with a bit of nostalgia because everyone loves to go out and uh, witness these things firsthand and a lot of people haven't seen you probably since the 60s. Well, there's some great music from the 60s, you know, and I was uh, responsible for some of it. So, and the people like to listen to us, you know, because it's good stuff and we're good singers, we're good musicians and... uh, yeah, we're all right. We're good. <laughs> You're all right, are you? <laughs> um, yeah. On the tour, there's some big characters. Who's probably the biggest? Would you say Alan Mosker or Barry Whitwam? Who's the biggest character? Chris Farlow, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've heard he's good. <laughs> 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 of course, you are a big uh, Rolling Stones fan. Uh, what did you think of their Glastonbury appearance? Did you see it? I, I only saw snippets of it. and um, But the Stones are the Stones, you know, they're... Um, they're, you know, I mean, what you say about the Stones, they're, they helped me in my career. And um, I'm great friends with all the Stones, so yeah, I love the Stones, you know. And let's talk about your version of Handbags and Glad Rides, because it was written for you by Mike Darbo, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Mike Darbo wrote it for me. Yeah, he called me around his house and said, I've got this song for you written for you. And he played it to me, and I thought, what a lovely song. And I was so proud and privileged to have it, have, have it written for me. Everyone thinks it was written for Rod Stewart, don't they? I know, they they, they always think that, yeah. But uh, the people who know, you know, they they know it's... Uh, the de- definitive version is from Chris Farlow, that's it. Oh, definitely. It's a much better version. You had some amazing songs out, and um, I suppose uh, that's one of your massive ones. And, of course, uh, Out of Time. Out of Time is also the title of the film, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the film. Well, it's not been released yet. It's still being put in production at the moment. So um, they're just uh, finally getting it all edited and all that sort of stuff. But you can see snippets on um, on the uh, website. Um, it's uh, Chris Farlow, the film. Yeah. If people want to go on and have a look, they can look at some of the snippets of the, of the actual gigs and uh, me talking to different people. So um, that's, that's, that's what to do. Yeah, when's that film going to be released? I would have thought by the end of this year, it must be. Wow. Yeah. Is there some secrets in there, or is it all stuff that people would know? No, not really. It's a very honest portrayal of uh, the crew coming around on tour with me, and they went to America with me, and all over Europe they went with me, and uh, to Scandinavia, and then they interviewed some various artists about me and being involved with them, like Albert Lee and... um, some other people, and uh, so it's going to be an interesting film. Yeah, I'm sure you've got a very, very interesting story. You've been um, in the antiques business for a few years. You still do that? Yeah, I still do that. I'm still working in my little workshop and getting things repaired and polished, and um, which I like doing. I was a carpenter and joiner for uh, ten years of my life, and I started left school, so that's why I, I'm still involved in it, really. Yeah, do you collect um, your own things, or do you find it difficult? Do you keep the posters and things from your tours from the 60s onwards? Yeah, I mean, all my family have stolen all my stuff. <laughs> I mean, they have, yeah. I mean, records, I mean, some of my rare records, like Buzz with the Fuzz, which are worth like £400 a single yeah. now, they just come in and say, oh, can I borrow this for a couple of weeks? You know, and I go, 
well, what can I say? I can't say no. No. Because they think I'm tight then. <laughs> so I said, yeah, right. And, and they never return it, you know. Oh, what a shame, what a shame. I'm going to go around their houses soon and start to put you back my stuff. I think you should, yeah. Like a bailiff go around knocking on, saying you own me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, put it on eBay. <laughs> yeah. um, they released on the immediate record label. I used to love the font, uh, the actual font for the immediate label. It was quite uh, striking, quite iconic. Yeah, yeah, that's a... Uh, Good like well that was uh well not my first label that was my, I think my third label but uh, of course it was uh, managed by Andrew Lou Goldham who was the Rolling Stones manager at the time yeah. so that's why I was asked to join the label because I was being recorded by Mick and the Keith so that was it and playing today because you still do quite a lot of tours you're in your seventies now do you think you're ever going to slow down no I don't uh, you know I speak to people like BB King who's eighty five still touring yeah. Uh, I saw John Hendricks the other night at Ronnie Scott's club, who was great. He's 91. Wow. So I was amazed that he's still standing there up stage, dancing around, doing some great vocal work. No, I mean, it's, it's in my blood, you know, and um, hopefully I can carry on for a few more years. Oh, without a doubt. You've got quite a collection of shirts, haven't you? Um, do you get them off fans? Yeah, or do you I wine shirts. Yeah. Do you get them off fans as well? Very occasionally. Um, I got a box last year from America with about 15 Hawaiian shirts in it, and that was a gift from uh, a guy who's a fan of mine. And he <laughs> sent me 15 Hawaiian shirts, and they all fitted me. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so where do you get yours from? Mainly when I'm in America. I buy them at flea markets or vintage clothes stores, or um, I can't really buy them over here. Um yeah, that's where I get mainly in America. Yeah, well, that's where they were invented anyway, so that's where they come from. Yeah, get them from the source, obviously from Hawaii. That'd be quite nice. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> so, besides the film that's coming out uh, this tour, what else can Chris Farley tell us about? Well, I'm working with Van Morrison at the moment as well, so that's been very good. I just did some work with him in Ireland, and that was lovely. And. Um, uh, Jimmy Page is supposed to be doing something later on in the year, which he's, in, he's asked me to help him with, so that would be lovely. And uh, I've got another tour next year as well, another 60s tour uh, with the searches, I believe. So it's very busy for me at the moment. It's been absolutely lovely talking to you today, Chris, but we're out of time. All right, mate. <laughs> and I'll see you in Stoke, yeah? Yeah, you will do, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Lovely. All uh, right, mate. Thank you very much for phoning me. Thank you very much. Thanks, babe. Bye.